you in 2007. <laughs> uh, she's getting to look more and more like you every day. <laughs> Seriously, though, when we decided to get you cloned, well, for some reason, I thought she might be a bit different to you. There's no doubt that every couple should have the right to reproduce and choose the option via which they choose to reproduce. <laughs> the people are so scared about cloning because we're simply, they don't know enough about it. Few scientists doubt that a human clone is already in the making and that such a development is full of risk. Even those who have successfully cloned animals believe human cloning is a step too far. The offspring may well have abnormalities which with human medicine may not be life-threatening but I think that the chances of that happening uh, are not worth the risks at present and we should not attempt human cloning. I think what people have got to realize is that if you develop human cloning, you're going to start experimenting on children, on babies. And there will be things that go wrong. There will be um, suffering caused. And it simply can't be justified, that kind of experimentation, on people because somebody feels that they want to perpetuate their genetic makeup. But Dr. Panas Savos believes fertility specialists like him are perfectly placed to avoid the risks. We've been doing IVF in humans for the last 24 years and therefore we know more about human reproductive medicine, how to create a child or an embryo in a dish, transfer it in utero and then monitor that pregnancy and make sure that that pregnancy is guided properly to a very successful fruition. And we're very good at that. The bottom line is this, that cloning will eventually become just another mode of human reproductive um, technique that people would really go to as a last resort. Our poll reveals intense opposition to cloning, even for infertile couples who cannot have a child any other way. Almost nine out of ten people polled in the UK said they wouldn't want to clone themselves even if they were infertile. The Danes are even more opposed to the idea but a third of Mexicans support cloning. Hey, we are going to be genetically modifying people, and perfect specimens, you know. I don't think there's a place for cloning at all. Reminds me of my mother's curse. I hope your children are just like you. No. <laughs> cloning myself? I think one Miles Miller in the world is enough to satisfy. I'm with him. <laughs> no way. Yeah, I wouldn't want more of me running around. That would be scary. Yes. I would never consider cloning myself for me. That's not that's not for me. I, I don't know if it's wrong morally, uh, but I don't I don't think I'd do that for myself. I'd think it'd be a little too weird for me. Many of us, it seems, find human cloning abhorrent, but some believe that distaste among scientists will disappear once the first steps have been taken. The scientific community, they're saying, oh, no, 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 this is irresponsible, it's unethical to clone a baby. But then when you dig deeper, the scientists are really not opposed to cloning. They're just saying it's not safe yet. We haven't perfected it yet. They're really only opposed to those researchers who are jumping the gun because it isn't safe or because the scientific community hasn't put its blessing on it. The only way to stop human cloning altogether might be to impose a worldwide ban. You could make a worldwide ban have teeth if you wanted to, if there was the international will to do that, of course. It's simply not good enough to shrug your shoulders and say you can't do it, and therefore leave that experimentation to take place. When we asked if nature may take its revenge for experiments like human cloning, most worried are the Taiwanese and the Poles. Least concerned are the Danes. I don't think that uh, nature will take revenge upon us. I, I think that nature... Uh, that, that there might be unexpected uh, things happen because it's science and, and you might try something and it, won't, it will not turn out right and there might be de detrimental effects, but that's, that's, that's normal. It's not revenge. If you treat a human with disease and you make sure that whatever gene you give the patient to help them is not getting into their germline so that it's not 
given on to their offspring, then I think it's a very controlled and, and very helpful way to do things. I think there are dangers that something gets introduced into the uh, you know, society that we didn't plan on and you know, we just couldn't catch it. We don't really know that there are sufficient safety nets available right now to, to catch things like that. Yeah, if we start tampering with genes in the long run, there's probably going to be some damage somewhere along the human race. But uh, I don't think this is going to be any time immediate, no. Uh, but, yeah, once we start doing this on a regular basis, if that ever happens, I think the turnaround will get us. So Nature always fights back. <laughs> She usually has her way, so that's just how it is, and we're going to learn it with population growth in the, US, in the world, and uh, if we're not willing to control ourselves, and nature will do it for us. Every piece of technology comes with a price. There may turn out to be some terrible disaster waiting around the corner, and we can never say no to that, but it seems to me less likely that's going to come from genetics than it comes, let's say, from physics. I'm much more worried about the world ending with an Einsteinian bang than with a Mendelian, a genetic whimper. So I think, let's get real about the threats of genetics. They're there, but the hopes are much, much greater. And the promise of those hopes remains extraordinary. Since the discovery of DNA 50 years ago, I think one of the most exciting developments has been the ability to use this technology to replace various worn-out body tissues. So the hope would be is that within our lifetime we could eliminate diabetes from the planet altogether. Or say, for instance, you got in a car accident and you lost a kidney, we could take a skin cell from you and using this technology grow you up a new kidney. There will be benefits. But it's also fair to say that we're also going to deliver a lot of harm. So I think what is a responsible approach is to say, look, any new scientific uh, avenue brings with it both benefits and costs, a leap forward and leaps backwards. Our mission is to ask the important question, the Socratic question, the why questions, the ethical questions, the principal questions up front so that the journey will be a little bit more beneficial as opposed to being a step backward for humanity. And it's only by all of us asking these questions and listening to the answers that we can hope to regain control of what many believe will be the age of genetics. One thing that we can't cope with is disappointment. We can't cope with saying genetics is going to do nothing, let's stop it, or genetics is too dangerous, let's, let's stop it. We have no real option but to continue. And maybe in 50 years from now, I hope, genetics will allow me to come back and look back for the century of the DNA molecule.